Hello and welcome to the Becky Consult. We've been working on this model for a while, and as our custom demands here, we pick out any piece of architectural drawing and we walk you through the processes involved in how you can produce a working drawing that can be applicable on site by the artisans, which some cases are not educated. But you have to ensure that this working drawing can be applied by our artisans on site. So this is the current structure we've been working on. And after we finish the modeling of this structure, we have to apply our pre-analysis setting. Our pre-analysis accounts for the assumptions that will be made by the software during the analysis and the design phase. Because these assumptions are what the software we consider while taking decisions on our reinforcements and also our concrete to use uh, for construction. At this pre-analysis phase, we'll be touching these key parameters. We get to understand how you can apply your notional horizontal load to your structures. We also get to define the load cases and load combinations that will be considered during analysis and design. We get to do some important story and project information. At the same time, we select the rebar diameter and grade while also selecting the concrete grade that will be used in the design of this very structure. So we'll be kickstarting our pre-analysis phase with our notional horizontal load. Now, why notional horizontal load? For the fact that we are designing to BS8110, it specifies that all buildings should be capable of resisting notional ultimate horizontal load. And this is about assumed to be about 1.5% of our dead load. All right, so 1.5% of your dead load should always be applied to your structure in order to resist our horizontal load. So our horizontal load, they act in this direction as the name implies. And if this is not catered for, at the end of the day, you get to find out that when this load are acting on your structure, you get to have a sway condition that looks just like this. Now, bear in mind that this is different from our wind load, right? All right our BS code specifies that Wind loads should be considered when designing for structures that are 10 meters above a flat terrain, a flat terrain rather. Our notional horizontal load should be applied to all structures irrespective of their height. Be it a one story, two story, you should always apply your notional horizontal load. So let's move over to proto structure. Now, before you head on to do your pre-analysis, there is an important check you have to make after every modeling phase. So, we'll come to our analysis and we'll come to building analysis. Analysis and building analysis so come to this analysis tab and we run a building model check so running a building model check it helps us to check if we have any columns that are not supported slabs that are cantilevered or are not connected to beams or columns so it helps us to detect any errors or any issues on our model before we go ahead to do the analysis so as you can see our Building model check has been completed and so far we have no errors. Okay, so we can close this and head on to our pre analysis. And over here, we'll head to our pre analysis. And by doing that, we'll go to our analysis tab. We'll click on building analysis. And under this pre analysis tab, you will see we have uh, parameters over here. So you click on this part and uh, you ensure that our code, the code you are designing to is selected. So we are designing to BS8110 as said and our corresponding BS code. So we we'll skip our foundation to when we get to the foundation stage and we'll come to our lateral loading. So you can see our lateral loading here. Automatically, Prota Structure has imported our 1.5% of our dead load. So if we come here, 
and we divide the uh, because this is in percentage it says we should apply 1.5 percent if we divide 1.5 by 100 we get to have this value and ensure your dead load is selected here as specified and leave all these other options as the default so we'll be applying this to our structure ensure this is ticked apply notional horizontal load at story levels and the next pre-analysis is our lateral drift okay so this speaks about our columns and our shear walls so we should always get to graze our columns and our shear walls for the fact that we are designing to bs8110 we'll leave this as brace on direction one and brace on direction two so if you're designing to other codes let's say you're designing to euro code it will come back to our code and we'll select euro code let's go with euro code 2 and okay then we'll come back to our lateral drift you'll see that the options here has changed all right so our columns are braced on both direction and our walls on direction one if you look at here you can see direction one are braced by the walls on direction two why our walls on the direction two are braced by the walls on direction one so in essence our share was over here. Our share was on this direction are braced by the walls on this other direction. Why the walls on this other direction? This can be our direction one are braced on the walls on our direction two. All right, so we'll go back to Prota and let's go back and take this uh, to BS8110. All right, so we'll come to our lateral drift and leave this both direction braced and braced okay so we'll come to the next setup which is our title and we'll be inserting our project information so let's call this modeling class one sorry class two and made by and this part is a uh, you can insert your project information as you wish and we are done with this part so we'll click ok and the next thing is our load cases and our load combinations so we'll come to load combinations and as you can see over here we have no predefined load combinations or load cases that will be considered during the analysis and design so we can do this automatically with the help of Prota structure. What you just have to do is come to loading generator and we have our vertical load and horizontal load tabs. Okay. So our vertical load are speaking about our dead load and our imposed load. So you should never design your load to your structures to vertical loads only. You should always consider horizontal loads as well, which are the lateral load and wind load we just uh, checked. So we leave this and uh, we can as well make modification to our partial factor of safety but as regards to our bs code we'll leave this as 1.4 gk and 1.6 qk so we'll leave this and we'll come to our horizontal load okay ensure your notional load is ticked which we just checked earlier ensure this is ticked so that the effects will be applied on our structure and since we are designing to the BS code it also specifies BS 6399 part 2 specifies that we should apply our wind load to any structure that is 10 meters above a flat terrain. So because this structure is about one, two, three, four, five, five stories, and uh, the height of each story, we are assuming the height of each of these stories to be three meters. So definitely that will be above 10 meters. So we ensure our wind load is thick. We will not define separate negative load cases. We can take a look at this later in further classes, but for now, ensure that you tick your wind load and you click. Okay, so automatically our load cases and our load combinations has been defined over here. Okay, so these cases and combinations will be considered and we can click. Okay and we are done with generating our load cases and combinations 
if this video has been helpful to you please do well to like it subscribe and click on the notification bell so you get notified anytime we post new content on our channel so the next thing is we have to select the materials that will be considered during design the materials we are talking about the reinforcement grade the concrete grade and the rest so we'll come to edit materials and under default materials here we can select our concrete grade okay we can click here and select a different grade so let's design this structure with grade 25 slash 30 you can apply to let's apply to every other structural uh concrete members so we'll click on this and uh, click ok and the next thing we select our reinforcement grade we'll leave this at grade 14 because of my location of design so i'll apply to every other members and click ok then the rebar diameters that will be considered in design so for our concrete columns let's select y16 y20 and y25 all right i'm okay with these three rebar diameters and for our walls let's select y16 okay see for our walls our web bar let's select y12 only come here and select y12 and we also come here and we select y12 only all right then our concrete beams our beams you will consider same as our columns which is y16 y20 and y25 okay now for our slabs our floor slabs we'll be sticking with y12 only so we'll click here and we click okay then our links our links will stay with just y10 okay so these are the repair diameters grade and concrete grade that will be considered during design so we are almost rounding up with our pre-analysis so the, for the fact that we are trying to keep these videos as short as possible we apply our wind load because our wind load will actually take a lot of time so we get to apply our wind load in the next lecture so while we are done with this part let's come back to story settings we come to building set out and we come to edit story okay we'll be leaving our story height at three meters each so this is three thousand millimeters which accounts for three meters at the level of each floor and our first story bottom level dpc we will leave this at uh, 600 why our foundation depth remember we said we'll be designing for a raft foundation due to the soil the soil report so we'll be taking our foundation depth let's uh, let's assume a depth for now of 1200 millimeters okay and we click okay and save this all right so the next thing is our end conditions so to apply our end condition on this structure we don't need to make any modification modification to what is already here by default all our structures are fixed so believing all end conditions are as fixed because we want the software to transfer the moment all the moments from the beams straight down to the columns so for that reason we are not designing our beams as self-supporting members we will be transferring all load from our beams to our columns so we will not be inserting our hinge on any end okay so we'll leave it as fully fixed if you found this video helpful up to this point please do not forget to like subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell so you also get notified anytime we post new videos on our channel